Now, what distinguishes Christianity from other religions? Now, there are lots of arguments and lots of discussions about that. But, you know, if we look at Exodus uh, 33, we see that, you know, God dwells in, in, in the midst of his people with power and glory. You know, that's one aspect of it. But then, if we look at the New Covenant, um, we see that the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit um, makes God much more visible than ever before because of the workings of the Holy Spirit. And I think really that distinguishes us from every other religion because we actually have the presence of God but we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that manifests that presence and God is visible. And when God is visible, he's visible through signs and wonders. And we'll see that time and time again in, in the book of Acts, um, you know, miraculous things happen through the hands of God's servants. Now, we all acknowledge that Jesus, who is God's anointed, had the spirit without measures. He, you know, he, he could do anything. You know, he was God. And he came in the flesh. But he was an example to us. You know, when he prayed to the Father to send the Holy Spirit, um, he wanted, and he had a vision that, that the Holy Spirit dwell in his bride, and that is the church. And uh, when he dwells, we know that he dwells in the full manifestation of God's presence. And that's God's glory, God's power, God's majesty. And through the ages, the church has always sought to, to have manifestations of the Spirit of God. In other words, we've all wanted to see miracles. And you know, for the last few weeks, we've just been focusing on the Holy Spirit, and um, the Holy Spirit's just been gently guiding us toward things to, to make us more familiar with him and, and accustomed to this new environment that uh, we need to be in because God's doing something new. Um, and it's amazing that, um, you know, he always does it as he wills. You know, you, you can plan, you can do, but it's as he wills. He, he has sovereignty over how the gifts of the Holy Spirit manifest. And uh, the Sunday before last, after the service, um, I spoke to a young man. I don't know if you're here today. Eric, are you here today? <coughs> no? Um, well, anyway, this young man who is 22 years old uh, uh, told me that um, he's... Uh, and, you, you know, he, he's obviously been going through some very intensive chemotherapy for, since April, they've been trying to treat him. And um, we're just talking. It wasn't like a healing service. It wasn't something that anyone had planned. We're just having a chat. And uh, I was drawn to him because, you know, the, the, the compassion of the Lord said when you see someone and you know he's ill, um, just by looking at him, you can see he's seriously ill. And um, we started to talk, and you know, he told me that he was 22 years old. He had this one of the very aggressive forms of cancer, and that it had spread to most of his organs. And um, of course, they didn't give him much hope, but they were going to start further treatment in April. And, um, but he was going on Tuesday to have another checkup to tell him you know, where it's at, and then to plan the other treatment. And while he was speaking, as just the Spirit of the Lord came on me. And you know, in, in Acts 4, it says that, and with all boldness we may speak your word. I think and that's the very key to unlocking things. Because after that it says, and by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your son, Jesus. Um, and I just said to him, I'd like to pray for you. And um, he told me he had a lot of faith. That, you know, he, he's, uh, 
always listening and to our, our services online, and he's very familiar with my teaching and you know, all that, which is always an honor. But I realized that, I said, look, can I, can I pray for you? Do, do you believe God can heal you? And he said, oh, yes, yeah. So I said, well, why don't we believe then um, that God will heal you? And as I started to pray, I said to him, I'm believing that God will do something before you have your test. So that when you have your tests, there will be evidence that God has done something. So he said, amen. And of course, you know, we, um, after we prayed, I, 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 you know, I just went off back into the, the pastor's lounge and he, he went away. And then uh, the other day I got this uh, email from him. He said, hi there, I'm a visitor to your church. Uh, um, when I'm up seeing my father, who, his father lives in, in Isha. And I came the other week, and I'm going through a chemotherapy for a, and have a very aggressive cancer, and have been receiving treatment since April. I spoke to Pastor Chris when he came, and we had a lovely chat, and um, he prayed for me and told me that I would be healed, and I got my results yesterday. And they said my lung cancer has gone completely, and that my liver is improving, and the cancer in the liver has shrunk by over half. And also that the back of the stomach, it has also sh uh, shrunk considerably. Um, please let him know as a matter of urgency and ask him to pray for my further treatment. Uh, and I thank God, but please let him know uh, that it's important um, uh, to know that this great healing, uh, as I, uh, I explained to him, I've been through uh, some tough times with people who have out my faith. Obviously, you know, he's at university. You know, he's gone through chemotherapy. You can see he's a very ill person, but it's amazing how people still attack you because of your faith. But that was confirmation for me that the Holy Spirit's doing something absolutely fresh. And what he wants to do is he wants to do it out there. You know, it, 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 today, I've called it Healing Sunday because God spoke to my heart and said, look, I want you to pray for people this Sunday for healing, um, especially for those with tumors and growth, um, but for all the sick, because he's doing something. Amen. Amen. And today we're going to focus on that. Uh, it, you know, that, for me, is an awesome miracle, because it didn't just... The cancer in his lungs disappeared like that. The rest shrunk to over half. But doctors couldn't do that. They couldn't do that between the Sunday and the Tuesday. <laughs> God did it immediately. Amen. So God gets all the glory for that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, as I said, the, the Holy Spirit operates as he wills in various and diverse ways in any member of the church. So, you know, we often come and we just look at the podium and we think, well, God's going to have to do it through the pastor. No, he'll do it with, through anyone he wants to do it through. Because Jesus, when Jesus prayed, he prayed for all believers. You know, not just for the pastors. So, you have it as much as I have it, provided you're open to the Holy Spirit. He will use you. Hence, it is possible for someone to be filled with the Holy Spirit for one special assignment and not for another. We all have different assignments. There are also times in church history when certain gifts of the Spirit were manifest with power, while at the same time, ignorance and unbelief had hindered other gifts from operating. Therefore, wherever the life more abundant in the Spirit is, that's where you're going to find the signs and wonders. It's about the Holy Spirit. As I said last week, so many of us are on looking in the wrong places when we should be looking for where the Holy Spirit is. We should be desiring His presence for Him to manifest Christ in our lives. In 1 Corinthians 12, it, it talks about um, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it says this, it says, these, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. 
and there are diversities of activities. But it is the same God who works all in all. So there we see the Godhead all having different responsibilities. We see that there are different differences, uh, diversities of gifts. So all the gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. Then we see that there are differences of ministries. Ministries are provided by the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there are diversities of activities, but the same God. You know, God is in control of everything. Whatever you do, He's in control of. Then it says this. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Say one. one. Each one. The manifestation of the Spirit is not given to everyone. It's given to each one. For the profit of all. So we see it's individual, but it profits everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it's just going to profit you, it's not the Holy Spirit. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one, again, individually as he wills. So I want your expectation to rise because you as an individual are a vessel that God wants to use. He wants to manifest a gift, some of his gifts, through you. If you're not open to it, he's not going to do it. But if you are, then wherever you are, whatever you're involved in, he has the opportunity to do exactly that. He says, distribute to each one individually as he wills. Now, we can't twist his arm and say, well, I want you to do it because I feel you know, emotionally attached to it. No, it's as he wills. And he will also do it his way. That's the tough bit. Because often we want him to do it our way as we will. The gifts of healings is one of the most beautiful manifestations of the Spirit. It is recorded of, of Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10 verse 38. The Holy Spirit in him was a healing spirit, and he was the same spirit that was in the disciples after Pentecost. For that reason, signs and wonders was a continuous experience of the early church. What happened? It's the same Holy Spirit. It's the same church. Amen? Amen. Nothing should have changed. We've changed. They didn't have the privilege of going to the Word <laughs> and getting built up in faith. They knew that the same Jesus that was there, you know, a decade or two before, was still operating through the Holy Spirit. And therefore they knew that when the Holy Spirit was around, Jesus would do exactly will continue to do what, he, what he'd always done, and that is to, to heal, to set free. That's why they prayed this prayer. Now, Lord, look on their threats. When you are under threat from unbelievers, you need to pray that prayer. Look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. By stretching out your hand to heal. Let me tell you, you know what shuts their mouths more than anything? Healing. Healing will shut their mouths. We need healing in the world more than we need it in the church. That will shut their mouths. 
I'm not saying God, that God will always look after his children. But I tell you, the signs and wonders and the healings and the miracles, that'll shut the mouths of all the people that oppose God. That signs and wonders may be done through the name of your Lord and Holy Servant. See, we look through the book of Acts, all they had was the name. They didn't have the book of Acts, but they had the name of Jesus. But in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. They would try to stop them preaching and teaching in the name. They had the name. They knew that when Jesus left them his name, he left them the same authority that he had to do the very things that he could do under the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Stop looking at other people and look inside of you. Be God inside minded. Realize that in you is the resurrection power that can quicken your mortal body to do great things for God. And stop thinking only of yourself. Think of those around you. Think of those you come into contact with. The abundant and continuous outpouring of the Spirit in the early church produced abundant and continuous healings. What a lesson for the church today. The early church wasn't seeker-sensitive or politically correct. It did not have clever church programs, Christian television, or seminars. But what it did have made all the difference. The early church had a special measure and understanding of the Holy Spirit. Why? The Holy Spirit had just come. They were still on fire with the excitement. They could see that those men that had rejected Jesus, those men that were so frail and, and, and so impossible to deal with because they weren't consistent in their faith, were suddenly great men of God. And thousands were coming into the Lord. Signs and wonders were being performed through their hands. Divine healing is the work of the Holy Spirit. Christ's redemption has extended its powerful working to the physical body. And the Holy Spirit is responsible both to transmit it to and maintain it in us. Our body serves, sorry, and shares all the benefits of the redemptive work of the cross. And even now, we can receive the promise of divine healing. I sent an email out saying, Look, just bring the sick. How many of you know people that are sick? Did you bring them? Good. If you don't know anyone that's sick, go to the hospital. I'm sure we know people that are sick. God wants to heal them. Amen. God wants to touch them. It is Jesus who heals, Jesus who anoints, Jesus who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Jesus was around the same people that couldn't do anything, and yet afterwards when he went, they could do everything. He sends us the Holy Spirit here on earth today, either to keep sickness away from us at bay or to restore us to health when sickness has taken hold of us. Divine healing accompanies sanctification by the Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who makes us partakers of Christ's redemption. Therefore, the healing that He works is an intrinsic part of His divine mission. The Holy Spirit heals a person either to be believe and get him saved. We see that. We saw it time and time again. Or to confirm his faith if he's already converted. Through healing his body, the Spirit encourages a person to renounce his own ways and to consecrate himself entirely to God and to his service. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, James 5, 15, and 16, Hebrews 12, verse 10. No, divine healing always glorifies Jesus Christ. It is God's will that his son be glorified and that the Holy Spirit will do this whenever he comes to demonstrate the redemptive work of the cross. In the natural, the re redemption of the mortal body appears 
almost more marvelous than the immortal soul. It is in this way that God wills to dwell in us through Christ and consequently to triumph over the flesh. Once our body becomes the temple of God through the Holy Spirit, Jesus is glorified. But note, the temple must be whole as well as holy. Amen? Amen. Temple must be whole as well as holy. So no point us saying, well, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit and the temple is not whole. God wants to heal us. You know, it's part of the redemptive work. Jesus became a curse for us that we may abide in divine health. We also know that one person may be used more specifically than another for the gifts of healings. For example, one might have great success praying for growths and tumors, while another might have great success praying for blindness and deafness, etc., only Jesus had a 100% success rate in praying for all sickness, all disease, and all injury. This is because he had the, the spirit without measure. No other person has healing power like Jesus had. Individuals of the past, such as John G. Lake, Catherine Kuhlman, William Branham, and others, certainly tapped into the power of God and saw astounding healing and miracles, but no one ever had and will ever have healing power available to them in the way that Jesus did. This is because no one can handle what the world would throw at them if it was without measure. You know, the Lord's fame and not no notoriety did not affect him. He was still the same before his ministry. If you meant Jesus before he was taken into the wilderness to be tempted, before he came out and started his ministry, you would have said, he's still the same person. The only difference was now the Holy Spirit was upon him, but it did not affect him. Jesus had one goal, and it was to glorify his Father. Now the body of Christ corporately shares in the power of Jesus and by this I mean that the power that was on Jesus when he walked the, 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 the earth is now upon his bride, the entire body, as she walks the earth. This is the reason why one person operates in certain gifts while another operates in completely different gifts. But one and the same Spirit works all things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Now we know this uh, story at the gate called Beautiful. And we have, you know, Peter and John, they rock up. They've been there. I mean, they're good Jewish boys. They go there twice a day, and they've been doing that probably for, for decades. But this time, they walk past the same person. They walk past the same person that Jesus has walked past, and yet Jesus didn't heal him. And then this is what happens. The man at the gate called beautiful, sees Peter and John and they ask them for, for money and, 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 and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he started leaping and stood up and just started praising God. Now, I love this story because it's spontaneous, instantaneous, and totally out of the ordinary. Because, hey, everyone had accepted that this guy who was crippled from, from birth would always be that way and he'd always be begging at the temple and everyone just got on with their lives and just gave him stuff whenever they wanted to. But something different happened. This time, these men were anointed to do it. And the Holy Spirit on them, working through them, gave them, equipped them with the same power that Jesus had. And I think Jesus knew when he walked by that that wasn't his time, amen, and that his boys were going to do it. 
Hallelujah. But I'm saying this to encourage you. See, there are people that maybe I've prayed for, maybe, you know, some other men of God have prayed for, and they've not got healed, and maybe it's your day. Maybe God's going to use you. And, you know, it's that very moment that the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you have sense that compassion, and you go up to them and say, I don't have anything, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed, and it happens. Hallelujah. Are you getting inspired? You know, it's the greatest evidence that Jesus is alive. And if the church isn't doing it, if, you know, we're just waiting for one person or two people or for an anointing service or whatever, we're going to miss so many opportunities. Amen. Amen. And we want it back. Let me tell you, the world is not impressed by size. They've got bigger activities than we will ever have. Do you know what impresses them? Signs and wonders. Miracles. They can, they can fill the stadiums, you know, 100,000 people. They can do all of that. What they can't do is get one person healed and one person saved. They can't do that. So we need to get our focus right. Either way, we can keep the healing word before our eyes can Complete healing is guaranteed to come. I want you, um, I've put together 50, they should be sort of going up, probably, I've, I've put together 50 healing scriptures. And, um, and tonight what I'm going to do is, is just extract certain things from those scriptures, and if it relates to you, I'm going to pray for you. It's just a, a, a nice way of doing it. But what I'd like you to do is, is um, get hold of them. They'll be up on the website tomorrow morning. And this is what Proverbs 4, verses 20, 22 says, says. says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, find them, and health to all their flesh. Hallelujah. The more you meditate on it, the more you, you discover things, the more impact it will have on you. Jesus is alive, and therefore all the gifts still operate today. And let me tell you, I've witnessed a lot of them. I'm sure a lot of us have. You know, you travel the world, you get involved in church life. There are always things that God astounds you with and surprises you with. But we need to see these gifts more and more in the world as well as in the church. How do we get it out to the world? Take your finger. Go on. Take your finger and do this. (laughs) Don't point it at the pastor. That's how you get it to the world. You have to take it. I'm fully persuaded that we are about to see a tremendous manifestation of all the power gifts in our midst. This is why the Holy Spirit has been leading us in the way He's been doing over the last few weeks. So why not start by being expectant and prepare yourself for what is to come? You know what encouraged me with this testament we have of of this young man? Um... Yes, my, you know, I felt the compassion of the Lord. Yes, I wanted him healed. Yes, I, I prayed for him. But it was just the way God does it. It was, you know, just very casual, very laid back. Um, you know, during the fellowship, not during the anointing of the service. It was just, hey, and just pray. Because what God showed me is that that's what he can do through all of us. Just while you're chatting, God will inspire you. God will impart that faith, sufficient faith. God will give you that boldness to say, listen, I'm going to believe before Tuesday God's going to do something. I had to speak it out. See, that was the boldness that you have. Because a lot of us are going to go, but what if I say it and it doesn't happen? 
Well, you haven't got egg on your face. God has. Amen? So why, why be concerned? Just speak it out. Do you know, every major thing that's been positive in my life, I've spoken out. You have the power of life and death just under your nose. And if you love it, you will partake of its fruits. Love to speak life. You will get life. Speak it over everyone. But then do what these people did in the book of Acts. and Ask God to give you that boldness to speak out his word. So be expectant and prepare yourself for what is to come. You say, well, why me? Well, because the Great Commission is very simple. I'll read it to you. All these signs will follow. All these signs will follow. All these signs will follow those who don't believe. No, those who believe. And believe in what? It says, in my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up servants. And if they drink anything deadly, it, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they may recover. They will. They shall recover. Has anyone got hands? Show them to me. Okay. What do you need? Hands. You don't need a university degree. You don't have to study medicine. You don't have to go to some theological college, although I'm not against any of that. But if you want these signs that are going to follow you who believe, that's all you need. Amen. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall, they will recover. Amen. 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 Do you believe it? That's the thing. See, if you're a believer, you can't stop at... Well, I believe Jesus is the Christ. Well, that is just the start. Because if he's the anointed one, and he sent his spirit to dwell in us and be with us to do exactly what he would do if he was present, then the Christ, the anointed one, must manifest in and through you. Listen to James verse four, 14 and 15. Five verses 14 and 15. Is there anyone sick among you? Put your hands up. Anyone here today that is sick? A lot of you. Okay. Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up or her up. Will raise him up. Not maybe. So, you know, we're just going to stand on those two. As I said, there are 50 promises. There are 50 things that you could go to, and you can see God wants to heal. God didn't do all of that just to, to frustrate us. And, and, you know, that really spoke to my heart. When I think if, if the sanctification and the redemptive work of the cross is securing things for me, surely the temple that of the Holy Spirit, my physical body, should be whole as well as holy. Yeah. Now, I can, you know, be instrumental in securing that holiness because it's a way of life. But let me tell you, I can't do anything to make myself whole. He does. Amen. So my part is to keep myself cleansed and sanctified and holy. He's part is to keep the temple whole. Therefore, he will heal you and heal you and heal you and heal you and restore you and make you whole. He is committed to that. He doesn't want all these temples. Look at them. Walking around riddled with sickness and disease. He wants the temple to reflect his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, whatever happens today is to encourage you to go out and do 
individually what God wants you to do. And that is to speak the word out with boldness and then to ask him to extend his hand, to stretch out his hand. And you know how he does that? Through your hands. And you know we're going to get testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony. People will come to know Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just look them in the eye. The, the difference between life and, and death can be you looking someone in the eye and saying, you're not going to die. You're going to live. And you say, oh, how could I say that? Because God's words are true. If God was standing there, Jesus, in the person of Jesus Christ, he would look him in the eye and say, you're going to live. Why can't you do the same? You're a Christian. Amen? That might be the difference between life and death. By speaking the word out boldly, then laying your hands on them. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We trust you enjoyed this program. For more information on Life Matters and Cornerstone Church, visit our website at www.cornerstonechurch.com. We hold our Sunday services at 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. at Sandown Park, Isha, Surrey. We are a family church where all are welcome.